بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم نیکس ون از سورس آف ریسک سورس آف ریسک In some books, this can be called as types of risk, but, but it is better to call it a source of risk. Uh, in this uh, picture, as you can see, basically there are six sources of risk. The first one is interest rate risk, market risk, purchasing power risk, business risk, financial risk, international risk, which is divided into exchange risk and country risk. But basically, we cannot summarize the source of risk into six types. There might be thousand sources of risk in the market. If there is a chance of loss because of Ahmad, you can say Ahmad risk. If there is a chance of loss because of Mahmoud, you can call it Mahmoud risk. So like Ahmad and Mahmoud, X, Y, A, B, C, and so on, there are thousand, thousand types of risk in the market, source of risk in the market. But we have summarized this one into six types. And I'm going to explain each one by one in the coming videos, right? First of all, let us go for interest rate risk. So what is interest rate risk? A simple definition is given here. The variability, the variability in securities return resulting from change in the level of interest is called interest rate risk. What do you mean by this one? Interest rate risk simply means that If there is a chance of variability in my income, see the point. If there is a chance of variability or if there is a chance of fluctuation in my income, and that is because of interest rate in the market, that is called interest rate risk. It means if it is possible to have some fluctuation in my income, if there is possible to have some variability in my income, am my income increase or decrease? My income increase and decrease. And the reason is interest rate in the market. So that risk is called what? Interest rate risk. On the other side, simply we can say, if it is possible to have some fluctuation in my income, and the reason is, for example, market, you can call it market risk. If there is a fluctuation in my income, and the reason is Ahmad, Ahmad risk. And the reason is Mahmoud, Mahmoud risk. So reason can be anything, so that can be the risk. It is possible to have some variability. If it is possible to have some variability in your income, or we can say in your profit, and the reason is, for example, interest rate, right? Or simply we can say, because of interest rate, my income fluctuates. So that can be called interest rate risk. Because of interest rate, my income fluctuates. Or it is possible to fluctuate in the future. That is called what? Interest rate risk. Interest rate risk is common in the case of debt securities. Which securities? In the case of debt securities, right? It is possible in the case of debt securities. Debt securities means those securities which we issue and, of course, uh, we borrow loan from the market and the lender charge the fixed rate of interest, right? In this, in the case of debt securities, The value of the debt or the value of the security basically has an inverse relationship with the value. Uh, the, the value of the bonds or the value of the debt security has an inverse relationship with the interest rate. If you remember, if you remember from the previous, uh, we can say, uh, previous subjects, maybe in financial management, so you have studied the valuation of security, right? And the valuation of the bond had this formula, basically. C1 divided by 1 plus I or R in the power of 1 plus C2, right? This was the formula. C2, 1 plus I or R in the power of 2. And plus, 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 and so on, right? So you can say... For example, at the end, you can mention, for example, Cn divided by 1 plus R in the power of N, right? Basically, in the case of debt securities, in the case of debt securities, so value of the bond, this is called value of the bond, right? This is value. This is what? Value, or we can say present value. Value of the bond has an inverse relationship with the interest rate. As much as interest rate in increase in the market, value of the debt security decreases. 
as much as this one decreased value of the debt security increase why because this is in denominator as much as denominator is more of course the result is less right so that is why interest rate risk is usually common in the case of debt securities right so especially in the case of bonds if you purchase bond from the market if rate of interest increase value of the bond decrease if the rate of interest decrease value of the bond increase right so this is called interest rate risk right or let me give you one more example for interest rate risk right let me give you example of, of a bank for example let us say for example there is a bank by the name of azizi bank by the name of what by the name of for example azizi bank azizi Z bank right there is a bank by the name of Azizi bank let us say for example Azizi bank of course we know this is the function of the bank to take loan to take to receive deposit from one side and provide loan on the other side right let us say for example this bank want to take a loan from one of uh, we can say uh, one of the uh, one of the customer and the customer name is for example Ahmad right Ahmad bank want to take loan from Ahmad mention loan from here right or take deposit right bank receive deposit from one of our customer and by the name of Ahmad by the name of Ahmad and this for example loan is whatever the amount let us say for example amount is one lakh how much is the amount amount this one lakh and let us say for example interest rate for this bond is equal to 10 percentage and this loan is let us say received or amount is taken from the ahmad for three years for how many years for three years on the other side definitely we know this is a function of the bank the bank should provide loan to the customers bank should provide what should provide loan right so let us say bank want to provide loan and in this case mr mahmoud mr mahmoud want to take loan from the bank and the, let us say the amount is of course the same but bank definitely will charge, for example, let us say 15% interest on Mahmoud. And let us say this loan is taken for five years. For how many years? For five years. Right? See, let me summarize it. Loan is taken, amount is received or deposited uh, to the bank, and the bank has provided loan on the other side. It means from one side, bank received money from the customers. On the other side, bank provide loan to the, to the to the other customers who are in need. So this is a function of the bank which act as a bridge, or which act as a bridge between area of surplus and area of deposit. We know this one from definition of the bank. Let us say, for example, Ahmad has deposited to the bank an amount of one lakh, and the banker want to pay him ten percentage interest for how many years? For for three years. On the other side, bank provide loan to Mahmoud, amount is of course 1 lakh, but bank charge 15%. 10% is paid for the Ahmad, and suppose 5% is profit of the bank, and so on. And this loan is for how many years? For 5 years. Let us say, for example, after passing 3 years. After passing how many years? After passing 3 years. When 3 years has passed, for example, when 3 years has passed, in this case, let us say, for example, rate of interest increased in the market right previously rate of interest was 10 percentage now rate of interest is for example 17 percentage in the market after three years rate of interest increase in the market how many percentage 17 percentage definitely after three years mr ahmad won his money back the banker should provide one amount of one lakh to him if so one lakh should be provided to mr ahmad but when bank requests mr mahmoud to pay Definitely, Mr. Mahmoud will not pay. And even the bank will not request Mr. Mahmoud to repay his amount. Why? Because Ahmad has provided for three years, but the bank has provided this loan to the Mr. Mahmoud for five years. Unless five years has passed, Mahmoud will not pay to the bank. So what is the chance or what are the possibility for the bank to manage for Mr. Ahmad? In this case, either bank should go to the market and take loan of one lakh and pay to the uh, to Mr. Ahmad or other side on the other side the bank should compensate or the bank should negotiate 
with Mr. Ahmad to 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 uh, to do not receive his money and keep uh, depositing his money to the bank, right? So in this case, Mr. Ahmad may say, yes, I will keep my money with the bank, but you have to pay me 17 percentage rate of interest. How many interest? 17. Why? Because rate of interest is 17 percentage in the market. If you want me to keep my money in the bank, then you have to pay me 17 percentage. How many percentage? 17 percentage. Why now? Because the rate of interest is 17, right? So bank has no chance unless to take his money for the next two years. For how many percentage? For 17 percentage, right? But of course, the bank cannot increase the rate of interest on Mr. Mahmoud for the next two years. And the bank receive only how many percentage? Receive only, only 15 percentage. Now, what are the chance of the loss for the bank? Bank pays 17 percentage to Mr. Ahmad for the next two years. And of course, receive only 15 percentage from Mahmoud. So how many percentage loss? There's a two percentage loss for the bank. Bank pay 15 percentage to Ahmad, but only charge 17, only charge, charge 17 percent, pay 17 percentage to Ahmad, but charge only 15 percentage to Mahmoud. So two percentage loss is there. So this loss can be called interest rate risk for the bank, for the bank, right? Why the bank has suffered this two percentage loss and that, that is because of fluctuation in the interest rate in the market. So interest rate fluctuated from seven, from 10 percentage to 17 percentage. After passing three years, Mr. Ahmad will call for 17, not for the 10. But of course, bank cannot call Mr. Mahmoud to increase the rate for the next five years, right? So this is called interest rate risk.